Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and I'm joined here with two of my YouTube friends and in real life friends, Stephanie Schott from Spiritual Perspectives of Our Great Awakening, and of course, Cindy from Sacred Garden Yoga. And I'm really, really excited about the topic that we are going to be discussing today, having a little round table on today. I'm a little bit nervous, a little bit apprehensive, because I know that this is going to be a hard one for some people to to um to not be like triggered by and i'm hoping that by us having this discussion and starting to really talk about these things it will help with that triggering so we can all start to see where perhaps we still have some backup programming and we're going to be talking about um symbols some symbols today one in particular that has been uh demonized um and used nefariously but as I've said many times on my channel, and as we read about in the Law of One and other spiritual books, even in science books, the darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can create, right? Even if you think about the darkness of the mother's womb, the, the human is created by a flash of light. And that flash of light in the darkness of the womb is the sperm hitting the egg. So even within that darkness, the human is created by that flash of light photosynthesis same thing and so a lot of these these things we're contending with I, I see a lot of people and when we're here at this pivotal timeline shift um i know cindy was one of the first people to ever talk to me about the book the sophia code which we're le reading on my channel and i know stephanie's going through it as well and the sophia code talks about how we're coming into the age of miracles the golden age of miracles and um but but to get there we're having to kind of go through this static and this friction of of deconstruction in order to then reconstruct the opposite of war is not peace it is creation and part of that deconstruction and reconstructing in my opinion is healing healing what is already here cindy's been on the channel uh, talking about the healing of demons before prior I'll, I'll place that episode in the description box below if you missed it she was on with us with zooplik yesterday talking about it as well this idea of healing 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 not destroying not throwing something off into the abyss discarding it but actually bringing it in healing it and so we are going to be the main topic of focus today is the pentagram but we are going to start off with the swastika um just briefly so maybe if anybody is a little triggered by that we can think about something like the swastika um, for most of us when we see the swastika we immediately think about world war ii uh, nazi occupation of germany we think about violence and terror, right? Correct. That's what most people think of. But Cindy, you know, and I know, I know from my time in India, swastikas in the East are a representation of prosperity and peace. And there, it's all over my yoga shala that I go to to practice in um, in India. There's one on the floor right before you go into the Mysore where people often bow before before they come into the room to practice. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of bring that up. Is there anything you guys want to add to the swastika before we get into the pentagram? No, the same thing that I understood. And um, I remember visiting uh, some museums that have the paintings, like the old Buddhist paintings, the thangkas that have all the different deities. And there would be little swastikas, you know, painted on there as a symbol of, yeah, of prosperity. And I even read somewhere that it was also symbolic of like Buddha's footprint. And it was a very sacred symbol. And it's just unfortunate the way it got turned around. And I, I understand, I mean, I'm sensitive to the people who, who went through all that terror and everything for what the swastika means now, but it wasn't always that way. Yeah, exactly. And, it was inverted. Yeah. And a lot of the, the uh, Tartarian buildings we saw in DC, which we know where it was created before the controllers then took it over from the time of Tartaria. So obviously that's bringing us back to that age and time where they didn't use symbolism for nefarious reasons. They used symbolism for um, healing. reasons of love, healing, yes. Well, there's geometry. There's geometry involved, um, you know, as above, so below. The micro represents the micro, the macro represents the micro and the micro represents the macro. Part of the yoga practice with these postures we do are actual shapes that mimic shapes we see out in the world. And this 
just as these shapes, like we see like steeples or triangles, these pyramids that create an energy cycle. So too does our body. And part of moving these shapes is opening up different pathways for that life force, that Christ consciousness to freely, uh, freely flow through us, just as it should be able to freely th flow through the ground and the earth and the trees and the sky and the clouds. And so when we see these old symbols, these old patternings, because it's, it's basically just shapes they're putting together. Our, our, our ancestors understood that when we could see and recognize a particular shape, that shape is then also created within our own temple as well, if that makes sense. And so it's allowing these pathways of this, this Christ consciousness to then really flow through us. Something that she says are a lot of the entities in the Sophia code say a lot is this idea of the Holy spirit, which, you know, in, in a lot of religions, especially in Christianity, they talk about inviting the Holy Spirit in. But no, the truth is the Holy Spirit has always been there. By the time that sperm had hit that egg, that, that light was that holy, that Christ spirit, Christian spirit within you. And these shapes and these values, these pathways that run through you also run outside of you as well. And so what our ancestors were doing was literally quite brilliant. They were so much smarter than we were. Because they understood this. They understood how patterns in nature, patterns in what they were creating. It wasn't about seeing something and idolizing it. It was about seeing it and recognizing it within yourself as well. And that was the powerful thing about the swastika. Um, it's like in, uh, I say this a lot in Sri Swami Isachitananda's commentary of the Yoga Sutras, something really powerful he says, when you're finding your soul, you're refinding your soul. It's always been there. We just forgot it was there is the more you you settle into that soul your own soul the more you recognize the soul in other people right so it's not a narcissistic selfish thing it's it's like the airplane when you put the the the, the oxygen on your face first before you can actually help somebody else and so these symbols were so important to people not as an idol not as something to worship externally but as a reminder of what's inside of you, that peace, that prosperity, it's like Lakshmi, the, the deity in the Hindu faith, you know, people think that she means wealth and beauty, like external, but her original purpose was not external wealth. It was internal spiritual wealth, right? So it's all internal. And so I'm hoping that as we really start to face these triggers and face the, the ugliness, the shadow side of humanity, not just within ourselves, but within humanity, we can then start to work through it and bring it back to the, the healing, the place of healing back to its original purpose. And the swastika is an example, but what we're really going to focus on today is the pentagram, which I know scares a lot of people. And I'm actually going to pass the ball over to you, Cindy, on this one, unless there's anything else you ladies want to add about the swastika before we move on to the pentagram. <laughs> Good. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get to the, the, the juicy, the juicy pentagram, right? <laughs> um, I actually have one. Can I pull it up and show it here? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think I know everybody knows what the pentagram looks like. You might have seen this one at the studio. This is a big one. Yeah, it's a big one. Right? <laughs> um, but it is, uh, this is what's considered the pentagram. And the, the one with the, the circle is considered the pentacle. Um, and I love that you mentioned sacred geometry because that's exactly what the pentagram was considered. I was doing a little bit of research myself before I got on the, this call with you today. And I was reading about, uh, well, well, anytime you read or, or you dive deeper into the meaning of the pentagram, they all mention Pythagorean, mm -hmm. uh, Pythagoras, the, the, you know, the founder of the Pythagorean theorem. He was Greek. And they were absolutely fascinated in the ancient Greek were fascinated with the pentagram because of the, the state, like part of that sacred geometry and how the pentagram also holds the, um, the, was it the, the golden ratio. And if you haven't heard of the, the golden ratio before, the golden ratio is considered by some, it's like kind of like the fingerprint of the divine. Our body is even designed within the golden ratio. You can see it in our hands. 
this ratio of like the hands to the knuckles and see how the knuckles, the, the division of the fingers get smaller and smaller. Mm -hmm. That is, that's to do, I'm not that great with mathematics, but I know that's to do with the golden ratio. And then when you make a fist like this, this little circle, you've seen the seashell. Oh, yeah. You know, the reference. seashell of the, of the golden ratio, it's the same so thing. Let's pause there again. As I was saying. It's in our earlobe too. Yeah. As mm -hmm. above, so below, the uh, the patterning of your thumb, it's all everything, all these symbols are within nature. The pentagram is also the body, right? The head, the arms, it's the, the Vitruvian, it's, uh, if you ever looked at Leonardo's Vitruvian man, when he's standing out like this, yeah, it's the, when you stand out with your arms like this and your legs out and your head straight out, yes, your body makes this a symbol because your body, this golden ratio is also within your arms, and it extends out, you know, it's not just the fingers, but it's in the um, the proportions, the proportions of your arms and your legs and your torso and everything. So you are built with this golden ratio. And then you see it all out in nature, too. That's the way that, why there's been such a fascination. And I think the ratio itself is 1.618 or something like that. So the pentagram, when it's in its like perfect, when it's drawn in its perfect geometrical form, not like when we're, you know, we're just drawing it on paper, but it's like in its perfect form. It has that golden ratio in it several times. You so, know, Bernie, I laugh and I know Cindy's probably heard this, we say this in classes before. There's this um, transition we do in Ashtanga Yoga where you are in downward facing dog and you literally have to jump your legs through your arms and sit down. And when I'm teaching new students, their first excuse is, my arms are too short. And I always say, <laughs> your arms are in perfect proportion for your body. God made you perfectly mm -hmm. proportionate for your, you're just a little weak right now, or you're just not protracting, you know, but you, so it's funny you say that because again, I can't wait to start yoga <laughs> <laughs> again. <with> this, <laughs> I mean, that's the beautiful thing about these ancient practices like yoga, Tai Chi, martial arts. I mean, I'm not an expert in martial arts or Tai Chi. I've, I know a little bit about Tai Chi, but it's all the same principle of our ancestors creating mimicking and taking the beauty of, of nature that we see and understanding that it, that is also represented within ourselves too. It's like the number, I hate to say it, but it's like the number six, 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 all numbers started off pure and holy and they got inverted. Stephanie, you know, the, um, the positive side of six, 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 right? The so positive side of six, six, six. When you see that all the time, one of the biggest meanings is you really need to take a step back and do some inner work and start to really think about things because the number of six in itself is all about us as the human being. It's, um, it's, it's a number where it's telling you, you need to start recognizing, you need to start doing some inner work is what I had read on it. Um, I'm sure there's other meanings to it, but that is the positive side. I know it doesn't really sound positive because it means you need to do some inner work, but in a sense, it is positive because when we do the inner work, there's a really good outcome on the other end of it. There's liberation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing about, I mean, the, the pentagram wasn't actually demonized until about the 1800s, honestly. Which makes it a was lot actually, of sense. It was actually a very sacred symbol, even in Christianity. During medieval times of Christianity, the five points of the, the pentagram work um they it was used to symbolize the five wounds of christ and so they would use the the the, the medi medieval christians would use the pentagram as a, a way of protection the hebrews to use the pentagram it was holy for them as well as it symbolized truth um when it was first found or I, I think uh, um the first place the, the it was actually found was like back in 3500 BC or so by the Mesopotamian people and that they found the the star the the pentagram drawn on uh, pottery and uh, they don't exactly exactly know what the Mesopotamians uh, thought of the pentagram but some of the theories are is that they could have represented the five planets that were represent that they could see in the sky so you know Jupiter Mars Venus, Mercury, and whichever one I'm leaving out. <laughs> um, and that it also could have possibly symbolized Ishtar, who was their divine goddess. It was the, the, the divine feminine for them. And that's where we get Easter from, is Ishtar. 
Mm -hmm. the reproduction, yeah. The fertility. Um, yeah. 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 And then with the Western esoteric philosophy, along with Pythagoras or Pythagorean, I don't exactly know how to say his name. Um, the, the, again, the, the five points of the pictogram, like the, the first point, the top point represents spirit. And then you got air and water on the sides, and then you got earth and fire at the bottom. And so it represents basically when we, you were, you were talking about representing the human form. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because yeah, us in human form, we're also we, we, we're made up of those four elements. We can't deny it. We're made up of earth. We're made up of water. We're made up of fire. And then the, this top part represents spirit. Or for some people, it could represent the psyche. So this is like us in human form. Now, when you look at, at the more of the Western esoteric philosophy, um, let me see the way they put it. It's like there came the four elements in the form, which is, the four elements is also always representative like of Shakti, of earth. You know, when we talk about Shiva and Shakti, we talk about the divine feminine as being put into form. So it, that's, I laugh because they have really done a number to try to take away the divine feminine. And since they are, they've inverted the pen. But I don't know, Cindy, have you seen the uh, big Tartarian documentary that's like seven hours long? No, yeah, I've heard you talk bomb. about it. When you're talking about this, because he talks about, because we, we often think of air, water, fire, and earth, four, but he keeps talking about that fifth one, which he calls ethos, what ethos, which is the spirit. And he that is big in the Tartarian realm. So if we take this pentagram and understand that it was at one point holy, and we think about the Tartaria theory of the a thousand years of peace. And how this was a concept, these four elements were just so conceptually understood by the people who lived there in this time. It makes you understand why then some more nefarious beings would want to take that pentagram, that holy structure of all these elements with the top spirit or ethos being the, the omnipresence of God almost that links. And as he says in this documentary, you can't have air, water, fire, and earth without the ethos, without the spirit. It doesn't yes. exist. Yep. Exactly. And that's what this represents. This is the representation, the symbol of what you're talking about. So everything that you just put into words is in this. So I'm gonna have to send you that that documentary when you got mm -hmm. seven hours, Cindy. <laughs> when you got oh seven my gosh. hours. Oh I can't gosh. sit through even a half an hour video and I sat through that. I mean, it, but, and in, in intervals, but it was very interesting. So if people haven't watched that. It's called The Lost History of Flat Earth. It's on BitChute. Really and he doesn't really talk much about the shape of the earth. He gets more into, yeah. talks a lot, because then he gets into water therapy, and he talks a lot about the etho, the yeah. spirit. And he calls it the, like the God particle. And how so, mm -hmm. the architecture of those buildings are designed to harness in the ethers, part of the atmosphere, um, which is where that element lies in the what do you want to call it, the ecosystem i don't know the atmosphere or whatever it is the because we have the ethers spirit yeah. realm you know what i mean so it's 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 allowing like it's an antenna to harness in the um spiritual energy so we think about the way the old tartaria buildings look and even like churches right a mosque a temple they have almost like the top of the pentagram they have that top that's pulling mm -hmm. that in to give life like our head is almost like our own steeple. Every living being has to have a head. The, the, the things like I tell my students a lot, you, know, you can cut your arms and your legs off and still survive. It might not be that fun, but you can still survive. But you have to have this head and you have to have this torso. And so you can think about that as like the consciousness, you know, the top of that, that shashuna, that kundalini is, is that sixth and seventh chakra that come all the way back down to Muladhara. It's all about that harnessing. And so how... It's like when you see it, you can't unsee it. Mm -hmm. So these controllers, these nefarious beings that are in this particular club, they know more. They know what this is. And so, of course, they take this symbol that was so holy to our ancestors and they inverted it to make us want to repel from it. Because 
because it is it is the beauty and complexity of not just of a human being but that's the earth that's the animals that's the trees that's everything mm -hmm. consists of all these particles <laughs> it's nature mm -hmm. the the pentagram in essence re, uh, represents nature and i mean how much more beautiful can you get than nature and then yeah and then how spirit is in nature it's in all things spirit is what helps it's the space you're talking about that space spirit is kind of like that space that helps to uh, hold nature together and that's also that shiva shakti relationship you know yeah. that marriage of spirit with matter and the, that's what the the pentagram is representative you know the top you got spirit and then you got the four elements which is matter so it's like this this container of spirit and matter and how when you put those all that together how it, it creates this world you know this world this universe everything that that we live in it creates our bodies and let's um, think about that too for a second like even the human life is so fascinating to me because even you know if you share your sibling you have like the same dna pool as your sibling but you're so uniquely even though you might resemble each other you're so uniquely you even with twins, even with identical twins, there's a little bit of a difference because that is the, I think, I believe that is the, the pattern of the spirit that can then create this matter into its own unique, beautiful form. Um, and that's, that's to me is proof of a higher power anyway, right there. But um, Cindy, you grew up Catholic. So what, did you ever have a time now? I know Cindy, I know Cindy, I've known Cindy for years now. She's super open-minded and super cool and laid back about a lot of things. But, but when did you first discover that there was more to the story when it came to something like a pentagram. I mean, uh, I think was since I was little, I've always had a drawn to nature. And, you know, I was even a biology major in uh, college because I just wanted like answers. Yeah. <laughs> the answers to why the world works. And, it, you know, in church, you're like, I don't think they... I don't think they quite have all the answers here. <laughs> I was like, I think maybe they're, I don't know what's going on here. They talk a good game, but shit's not adding up. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> and so I was like, I think there must be something bigger out there than what's just being provided here, uh, here in the church. And I also grew up in, I was born in 72, so I also grew up in the 80s. And I don't know if you uh, have memories, too, of the 80s, but that was a, the, the era of the satanic panic. I don't remember that firsthand because I was very young and was just too interested in my rainbow bright and Teddy Rupskin. But yes, uh, me but, too. Me too. Was well, it, yeah, but I there was like a lot of it now. I have gone back and researched a lot of this stuff about the satanic panic, and I've read a lot of the books on it. I, I personally believe there was some truth to what was happening, but it got blown out of proportion in the media. So what will happen right. a lot, we'll see with these controllers is that, that some truth will get out and then they spin it in a way to cause more division, right? Instead of like actually seeing the full story. And so, yes. And that's yeah. part of what uh, contorted the pentagram too, because, you know, there is a satanic panic, um, and before that, there was a book that was written in the 1800s. It was a, it was a, it was a book on the occult. And we, we, we do all know that the occult has been very much demonized because uh, the Western esoteric philosophy is what is considered occult. But there's a lot of beautiful truth there as well, right? Um, but there was a book that was written... And they were talking about the pentagram and they put it in this book. And this is the first time that anything about the pentagram got a negative connotation. And they said, when, when you invert the pentagram, then it becomes a symbol of like evil because yes, you're putting the, the way the world should work upside down. I was just thinking that as you're, I'm like, I know where she's going with this. Mm -hmm. so can you repeat that again for those in the back who didn't hear you? The book actually said, here is, just to paraphrase what I heard you just say, here is this holy symbol that people use, but in order to make it evil, you invert it. That's what this book said. Like when you invert the pentagram, then it's like you're, uh, the, the natural er order of things you you're pulling it upside down 
And so then that's when people started to get more afraid. And then in the 1960s, when um, the, the Church of Satan used the inverted pentagram, uh, and they still use it as their symbol. And so all of that started to give the, the pentagram a more, or, or people just started to fear it more. They started to associate it with, with evil things. And then you have the Hollywood and the, the satanic panic of the 80s, and then every horror movie had the pentagram as the symbol of evil. So and so if you if you grew up with like, I mean, I still, even when I look at the pentagram, I still have some of that embedded in my yeah. brain. Like I, I look at the pentagram and I think of it like with blood all over it and all this because of what Hollywood has done to it. And I've actually was taken to a location when I was 26. My stepmother brought me to this location in the woods. She wanted to show me something. I had a friend with me. My dad was there too. And she brought me to this pentagram where there were uh, sacrificed baby goats. And I ran away like crying. It was awful. My stepmother's look. But um, now that I'm thinking back on it, what I'm hoping this is we come into this great awakening and we come into this, if we can't have a golden age of miracles until we actually sit back and like learn and, and heal and listen and try to understand. And so I, that's like, that was the biggest thing you just said, Cindy. So people watching right now, it's not the pentagram, it's the inverted pentagram. So if we're, if we're trying to understand the world around us, if we're trying to understand this alchemical, you know, all occult means is hidden knowledge. That's all it means is hidden knowledge and so there and even in spirituality there is like if you go and study yoga in india or if you study different lineages they're not going to teach you everything at once right because it would be too much so we have a rule with the yoga sutras like when you're when you sit down to study the yoga sutras there are four padas you start with the second pada then you read the first pada after the second pada but the third and fourth pada you don't touch those and for, for like 10 years into your practice because they deal with psychedelic stuff. And as my teacher in India would say, like, you need to make sure the student is humble enough after 10 years of having your, your ego broken by the practice that the student is humble enough to be able to then step into the third and fourth pada to under, understand these cities as they call them and use them in a fair and just way for the betterment of humanity instead of for a selfish way in order to disrupt the flow of nature. You know, that's the biggest thing I've learned between like what we call black magic and light work. Black magic is when you try to bend nature to your will, like turning the pentagram upside down, the inversion, the, the taking and bending it. Whereas light, light workers work with the flow of nature, help you move with nature to heal with nature, right? So that's the big difference between the two um, forces of, of, of magic, which magic is real. The whole, you are magic. Like your conception was magic, you know? So, um, the inverted you know, pentagram my so understanding, oh, I'm sorry. Were you no, saying something? something? The inverted pentagram also is where we get the bath from it. Hey. Yep. So they, well, the, they, they, and then the, 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 there's also some questions though. I mean, when I was reading whether, I mean, it was the inverted pentagram. It was in that one book, but I don't think it was like in several books. So there has been questions on whether it really does matter. I mean, they said it there, but like if you turn the pentagram upside, I mean, it's, it's, it's all the same. It's I, all mean, the same. I mean, you know, like if you really turn it, does it really do anything, you know? And um, is and is there any inherent evil in the pentagram? And, you know, and I don't think that there really is. I mean, you can still turn it and still be okay, but um, but it's, a, it's just the way people took it and said, well, it's going to mean this and this and this. You know, we put meaning into the symbols by the way that we use it. It's interesting because the more I start to figure out these controllers, the more I start to figure out their game, mm -hmm. it's like the most potent of, of positive stuff. The most, um, the symbols our ancestors used, the alchemy our ancestors used for massive healing, for massive connection. Those were the ones they went after the most to try to like turn people away from, you know, like the swastika, like the pentagram. That's just kind of in my, and, and you're right too. Even I still, even though I consider myself to be super open-minded and I, I love learning this stuff, this stuff is so interesting to me. I still have that programming where sometimes I'll see a pentagram and I jump back a little bit, you know, and then I have to be like, no, it's not. And I think you're right too, because everything comes down to intention. 
What is the person? The person is the conduit. The person is the conduit for everything. I mean, you've said that so beautifully to me, Cindy, that when you're talking about white magic or black magic, regardless, both have to come through the conduit. And so that's mm -hmm. why you see a lot of times people who practice black magic start to end up physically changing, losing mm -hmm. their teeth. That's a big one. Um, hair falling out like a massive clumps, you know, like um, skin looking all wonky. You know, it's it's because the energy of the uh, conduit to, to put that badness. But when you see light workers, light workers often look like light workers. They look light, you know, and so it's not necessarily the pentagram itself it's the person mm -hmm. who exactly yeah so I, that's what that was my biggest takeaway that i felt comfortable with that so i mean you know it just depends like if you have some <laughs> bad intentions and you want to take that and turn it around and maybe but i don't know i just that just feels so feels so wrong but i guess it is i mean that's part of it to to take the pentagram and use it for nefarious reasons when it's such a holy symbol in the first place. You know what I mean? Well, look what they I did mean, it up. was a holy symbol through many traditions, not just one. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about, you know, ancient, the Hebrews, even the Christians at one point. I mean, and then it just got turned around. You see versions of it as well in the East, and it represents the again the divine union of feminine and masculine. Um, you look at the 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 inversion of the cross. I mean, at first it was the ankh, and as uh, Stephanie has done some research then they cut off the opening and made a long steeple for the cross and then what do they do to that cross mm -hmm. yeah so if we think about that they, they flipped that cross upside down too just like they taken the pentagram and flipped it upside down mm -hmm. yeah yeah but in the, it's you know in this original form and of course we know that the wiccans and the neo-pagans and I mean, I don't find them in any way inherently evil. I mean, I know some people might, but, you know, most Wiccans and most neo-pagans are just mainly green witches or white witches. Yeah. And they use the, the pentagram a lot, too. And then, then that also gets association, especially if people look at Wiccans and they, they automatically think, oh, Wiccans are evil or the neo-pagans, they're evil. And they see them with the pentagram and then they automatically associate it with something negative. I've never, you know what I mean? So. I, I have a friend who was Wiccan and I never associated. Mm -hmm. um, she was very, uh, she's, she's no longer with us, but she was very um, nature based. Every yeah. was nature based. And That's she all it literally is. Mm -hmm. would not even like, if she saw a bug on the floor, she would remove the blood. She was a vegan before anybody knew what being a vegan was because her respect for other life was was just so apt like and it was just so genuine and so i've never resonated with it being evil never you know and i think that's the thing about this idea of witchcraft is again that's hollywood people mm -hmm. have all of a sudden have this like one perception of what that is but you know doing reiki healing i mean the sorcery of pharma pharmakia Mm -hmm. is a form of witchcraft so if you're taking medicine that's a form of witchcraft if you hug somebody and you feel their heart beating against you and you feel that transmission of energy that itself could be considered considered a form of witchcraft of light work you know so we have to start moving into this new timeline i just we have to start being stop being so reactive to things and understand that that's programming and actually settle in. And that's just my favorite part of the Great Awakening, hence my channel, is I love studying and learning this stuff. I think, Stephanie, you've mm -hmm. kind of felt, found liberation from this as well, haven't you? Well, yeah. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it was very liberating because these are things I was said since a kid. I never really admitted it to anybody. I hardly even admitted it to myself, but I was so drawn to all this stuff. But of mm -hmm. course, when it got to the church, that kind of put that wall up, that black up, like, oh no, you can't go into this territory because this is black witchcraft. This is gonna summon demons in and stuff like that. But once I started to do my due diligence and started to research into all this kind of stuff, <clears throat> then once you see it, you can't unsee it. You know what I mean? It was one of those things where I'm like, okay, well, now I'm seeing it 
in, in terms of the Christian church, I'm, I'm seeing that it's actually quite the opposite of what I was told. And, you know, like I remember walking into my, the, into a crystal store for the very first time, which wasn't too long ago, literally like maybe six, seven, eight months ago <clears throat> with a friend. Um, we have a huge crystal shop about an hour from me. Um, it's by the airport. And I remember walking in there and there was a lot of pentagram kind of stuff or pentacle kind of stuff in there. And at first it kind of like, whoa, hold up. Like what kind of store are we in? <laughs> but I had to like kind of fight that off and, and say to myself, no, like I got really good energy from that store, really good vibes. You know, the people in there were very friendly, very helpful. I felt very happy in there. So to me, I was more or less um, going based off of how the energy felt rather than um, my programming. And I had to fight it a little bit. It took about 10 minutes for me to say, no, nope, I'm safe. Like this is, this is a place where I can feel safe and there's nothing bad about this place. And I'm not sitting here buying pentagrams. So I'm just here for crystals. That's all I'm here for. Um, and That's even if I was there, pentagram, aren't you? <laughs> what? Now you're going to go buy you a pentagram, aren't you? You're going to walk I in. I probably like, should. I know I what this should. is for now. <laughs> it's not inverted. I, I have an onk. Now I need to go get my pentagram. <laughs> Well, so, it's a symbol of protection now. A lot, I mean, it's an, you know, a lot of people use it as an amulet, carried out as a symbol of protection to keep the yeah. evil away. Yeah. I don't think and anyone's not to you. bring it in, but to keep it away. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at this point in time, I don't, I try not to have any kind of cognitive dissonance or anything hinder me from either looking into something. And to be honest, if you're going to know, if you're going to know something about something, know all the different, you know, perspectives of everything. Um, you know, I'm not saying go study what black magic is all about, how to do black magic, but like that for the audience, like if you don't know what black magic is the actual definition of black magic, I mean, it's okay to look up the definition of black magic. And using the elements as such as fire, earth, air, whatever, to me, you're just using what God created. So how is that black magic? I mean, I'm sure you could use it and harness it for black magic, but if you're using it to heal people or to um, heal yourself, I mean, are, come on at, now. So look at the dosha diet that you've been doing. That's Ayurvedic. It deals with the elements of fire, water, earth. Um, I'm Vata Pitta, so I am highly air and fire. And so I have to eat more earth based foods that's dealing with the elements to balance my own body. So that's using these elemental uh, uh, things that were within me, and then knowing how to alchemicalize that to con to keep myself healthy. Because like, you're right, this is what was created by God. Yeah. God created this, you got a problem with these elements, then you got to talk to God about that. Yeah. Source. And once you it. know, the stuff with the elements, it actually helps you with everything. I mean, you even mm -hmm. said there's a pizza, kappa, and vata time of day. <clears throat> oh, absolutely, yes. So, like, when you're waking up during that vata time of day, you're waking up between the 2 and the 6 a.m. for Brahma Morta to do your workout. Literally, it is so much easier than waking up at 6 o'clock in the morning during the kappa time when you're more when you're less energetic and actually trying to get yourself motivated to do your workout. So, I mean, just understanding the elements in that concept and in food, like I got to see with you on our little trippy poo there, that grapes are not good for you because your body cannot alchemize it. Like it can't absorb it. It can't do anything with it. So, you know, your stomach got really bloated and um, versus me. I, I can eat lots of foods. In fact, I, I need to eat more lots of foods more than anything because I my pizza is imbalanced. And so you can eat Skittles and I can't. So everybody's so different in terms of what their bodies can absorb and, and use as nutrients and everything. And it's once you get the sense of all the elements, like even knowing your chart and all that kind of stuff, it starts to make life starts to make a lot more sense. Somebody commented in our last honoring episode. nature. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. It's in my last video, uh, I can't, I for, I for, forgive me, I forget who commented this, but I loved it. They said, you know, this, this information is like your owner's manual. 
You know, if yeah. you get a car, you have an owner's manual that you can read about, figure out what's going on. And, <clears throat> and that's right. It's, it's like, um, yeah, you saw so me. funny. You said that price. I went to church one day and they told me the Bible was my owner's manual. <laughs> <laughs> Your body is your owner's manual. <laughs> I to use it. It, I, I, it just didn't work very well. So I had to switch over to another manual. <laughs> well, think about it this way. So I remember growing up. Now, of course, I was born in 1983. So growing up in the 80s and the 90s, my parents knew nothing. And I come from a medical family, but they knew nothing about Ayurveda. I don't think they even know what Ayurveda was. And so we would be forced. We'd be given like apples and grapes to eat. I spent my whole childhood with massive massive digestion problems, massive stomach aches. My mother told me there was one point I had begged her just to put in my lunchbox crackers, just put crackers in my lunchbox because everything I was being forced to eat was killing my stomach because it was healthy. We went, mm -hmm. we went into this deranged place of being delusional place of being, of putting things into categories. But for me or people like me, grapes are not healthy. They are not healthy for me. You saw that, Stephanie. They do that is not good for my health. Mm -hmm. uh, Skittles are better for my health than grapes because we're doubled over and I can hardly walk. I forewarned you. Let's be fair. I did forewarn you not to eat those gas station grapes. Oh no! <laughs> but and like Cindy, you said you had your allergy test done, and you're allergic to or you have a sensitivity to apples. I do too. Yeah, that's where I had the most uh, uh, most severe sensitivity. Now it's not an actual allergy allergy, but it's it was a pretty uh, a severe mm, with apples. And I used to eat apples all the time too. Now I could probably have a slice of apple and be okay, but. Um, for the most part, my body does not process apples well. My body loves apples. Does <laughs> mm -hmm. so Now, my body has a hard time with, I'm noticing this now that I'm starting to understand, and this is the beauty in it, you can start to understand your body so much better by using the elements of like the RE diet and stuff yeah. like that. And mm -hmm. so for me to have an apple pie, I can deal with apple pie. I can, I can have apple pie. I mean, that's cooked apple. You Bryce, you can eat the apple pie because it's cooked, cooked apple mm. or apple salt now, cooked. Yeah. I've noticed with myself, I handle I handle raw vegetables very well. Well, what I've noticed is when I cook the vegetables, I might start to get some stomach pains. Right. I'm the opposite. Mm -hmm. I'm the opposite. Um, I can eat some raw vegetables, but after a while I can't do too much. And it also depends on the season. Yeah, like I can do more raw vegetables and feel okay in the summertime. But if you give me raw vegetables in the wintertime, my, uh, my whole body almost just goes like, ah, oh, no. So yeah, this um, part of the Ayurveda and this elemental thing is also recognizing uh, the cycles of things, the seasons and the cycles of things. That's a very nature oriented as well. Yeah. Isn't that in the Bible too? It's that bird mm -hmm. song, the song, a time to, do, to do certain things, a time to break down a time to like, there's a whole part of the Bible that goes through time to time to basically harvest time to, it goes through all these different times to do things. And that's Ayurveda. So you're, yes, yeah, Cindy's correct. And I see this in my classes all the time. I laugh about this because, you know, India, they have like, monsoon season in summer the temperature doesn't really change it just gets rainy but like in the summertime especially like when it's really hot your body is more open naturally because it's within this element of heat and so that's the time when you get given more postures when you're really being pushed because your body is in a, in a position where it can stretch and mold better and then once you come to that winter time you just work on it you're not given anything new. It just has, because your body contrasts and becomes stiffer, right? And so, and so when we understand what we're working with, within nature, again, that's the light worker. Again, according to the Navajo Nation, when I was studying the skinwalkers, black magic is working against nature for your own selfish, narcissistic desires. Light work or white magic is working with the element, flowing with nature, not trying to change nature, not trying to change any outcome, but just allowing yourself to understand how to flow with the elements of nature, which is in the Bible too. Again, the time to do this, the time to do that. Well, you know, that you guys will put in the comment section. I, I'm sure you are screaming at the screen right now. I know it's that bird song, that famous bird song, you know. I've never heard of the bird song, so I must have really sucked You've probably heard of it. One. 
It's if I can play it right now and not get struck for copyrights on YouTube, I'll text it to you, Mary Don. It's it's a very famous song. It was in the Forest Gulp soundtrack. Um, but my, my parents, both oh, my parents, yeah. to their mm -hmm. con their concert when they were teenagers. Um, the birds. To every there is a, mm -hmm. to every there is a uh, turn 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 anyway. I'll turn turn turn. Yeah, turn, turn. yeah yes, the I know. What you're about. That's the song. Uh, yeah. I'll send it. You probably heard it, Stephanie. It's a very, very famous. I song. feel so out of the loop. It's a very <laughs> famous song. It's probably like a sixties. Yeah, like from the sixties, probably. Yeah. Um. Anyway, mm -hmm. so so when we look at things like the pentagram, and like Ayurveda is the oldest system of medicine in the world. All right, mm -hmm. in the world, and we look at these pentagrams. We look at like things like Tartaria that's now coming to our attention. We see how long people lived, how they understood how to live how they understood how to move with nature and, and they and not only move with it but honor it and venerate the fact that that is this is god's creation and then we take the world we live in now where everything's inverted and we're trying to to disrupt nature we're trying to create dams and do these things to stop the natural flow of nature which is in, in itself black magic and so that's what i'm hoping we get out of these conversations is yeah, before we started filming, we were talking about, I was saying I was a little apprehensive because people were going to freak out a little bit, but it's like, no, we can't change anybody's mind. People who are severely programmed are just severely programmed. But I'm knowing that most of my subscribers as well as Stephanie's and Cindy's were, were open to learning and having these conversations and understanding that, you know, I've said this many times, a good person is a good person, whether they're white, black, man, woman, gray, purple, pink, yellow, brown, whatever, whether they're gay or straight whether they're Christian or Hindu or atheist or Buddhist, they're a good person. They're a good person. They're an mm -hmm. asshole. They're an asshole. It doesn't matter. White, black, gay, straight, Christian, Hindu, they're an asshole. And it's that it's people lie, but energy doesn't. And that's the beautiful thing our ancestors understood. And I think that's the, the, the path that hopefully humanity is heading back to in this time. Yeah. And I love that we, you know, coming back to that connection with nature again, which is, I feel so much of part of the work that, um, that is, is important to me. It's almost like I want to re-enchant. So in, instead of looking at the woods and seeing trees and seeing the trees as something that's like evil or, or not even that, but, you know, that's my next home or just seeing it as like a piece of material and not appreciating that it's an actual living, almost breathing thing that once you start to establish those relationships with nature, you know, with the trees, with the waters, with the streams, with everything that supports us and holds us, you know, the, the earth herself, that we will quit doing so much damage it, it's when we don't have a relationship with nature is when we start to, to do do the damage it, it's kind of like you know uh, when you have a relationship with your with your parents or your grandmother and you love your grandmother you don't want to see any harm done to your grandmother but a stranger like if there's a complete stranger you might not you know not that you don't care but you're going to care more if your grandmother got sick or got hurt versus a complete stranger same thing with nature. If nature is a complete stranger to you, if you don't spend time in it, if you don't open your eyes to the beauty and see how alive it really is, then you're going to be more prone to go out and to hurt it and to do whatever you want to with it because you don't, you don't see how much uh, nature's, you are just a reflection of nature. And what right. And, and, and we establish those relationships, then we will nurture and take care because now we have like a true relationship. And how nature does support us in so many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, the trees clean our oxygen for us. You know, they give us. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, Stephanie and I had that experience in D.C. We found a very old tree that we both immediately felt like we had to talk to. Like it was. Yes. Good. We, we grounded with the tree. We put our bare feet on the roots because the roots were very much exposed. Very, very old roots. Very large roots. And that, that tree has been there for a long, long time. And we, we both were very oddly drawn to it and we hung so out we yeah. took our flip-flops off and we put our bare feet on the tree and we could feel such um loving energy coming from it it was like sending us love almost. yeah and if someone tore that tree down what would you do right 
I mean, you know I what I mean? So it, was, it, it, it was break your down. heart. Same thing. You know, I feel that very strongly. I have a strong connection with trees. I have trees all around me here where I live. And, you know, I have a big street tree at the back of the yoga studio, but um, I actually can't watch it. If I see a big tree being torn down or like a big thing of woods being torn down, I can't actually look at it. It, it hurts me physically yeah. to, to watch it happen. It's like, oh, that hurts. I can't even be around it. So, yeah, that tree is a real thing. It's a yeah. real, it's a real connection. That tree in DC, somebody had carved like a phallic wiener God. on it. And like I saw it and I was like stupid kids, but then I felt the pain yeah. that tree must have felt to have that, you know, mm -hmm. that wiener carved into it, you know, and it's, um, I don't know where the security was because <laughs> it was like right by the Capitol. Why did they allow these teenagers or whatever to do that? But, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's, it's, um, it's like that book, The Giving Tree. Did you guys read that book growing up? It makes me cry all the time. The Giving Tree. Oh my God. I'm mm -hmm. going to put it. It's a, uh, I'll put a link to it in the description, but it's a kid's book, but it's, it, it, may, it made me cry every time, even as adult reading The Giving Tree. Um, and that's, that's, you, you know, we, we think we're so superior to nature. We think as human beings mm -hmm. that we're so superior, mm. but we're not. I mean, look at nature, look at like the trees in the autumn, the fall. They know how to let go of their leaves and trust that new ones will return in the spring. Humans mm -hmm. have a hard time doing that. So who's more, who's smarter then? Mm -hmm. Obviously the trees. Well, are all the, all the lessons you'll find it out in nature somewhere. Like all the lessons. Yeah, for sure. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that now I'm going to open this up. I'm going to call this part one. So I'm going to allow people um, in the comment section if there are any other symbols you want us to research or look into, if you have any questions about the pentagram or about anything we've spoken about here, if you genuinely want to learn, um, ask them below in the comment section. Um, and I will go through and read them and figure out a part two for us to do. I'll look into it myself. I'll send them to Cindy and Stephanie as well. I have, a, I have, um, I actually have a request for part two, if that's okay. Sure. Because I already know a lot about the history of this, but we need to really look into the pyramid and the eye of Horus. Perfect. We can add that in. I know Stephanie, or uh, Cindy knows a lot about the eye of Horus too. So, um, so let's, we'll put that into part two, but again, you guys, we can do, I mean, this could be an unlimited, unlimited amount of videos. So, um, yeah. you guys, if you have any questions, please put them down in the description box below as always any type of comments on this channel that are, are not so nice and are kind of abusive because of the topic at hand, I'm just going to block you because obviously as Stephanie says, we're not going to change your mind and we are open to learn on this channel. So um, I'm going to take that away and, um, and just leave this open for all the people watching right now that want to participate with us. And I, I opened my channel so that I would have a, a resource and a place to be able to communicate with other people. And we can all learn together because multiple heads are always better than one. We are all, all of us walking into this golden age of miracles. We are all a part of the same system of, of the pentagram of all the elements of, of mm -hmm. God's creation. We are that, 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 uh, Shakti to that Shiva. So, um, so yes, any questions you have or any comments you want to make, if you know something that we didn't mention in this episode, leave it down in the description box below. Please be kind to each other because after all, we are all just walking each other home and we're going to a very awesome home. We're, we're returning home. We're actually returning home. <laughs> we got a, little, we got a little, little lost there for a moment, but we're going to swing it back around and, and return back home again. So ladies, any final statements for this video before we sign off today? No, I'm just to good. be open minded, just to be open minded and just understand that, you know, things get inverted. And so, you know, if it if it's coming from an origin of light, we really need to go back to that origin of light instead of just getting rid of it. We need to heal it. Yeah. Yeah. We need to heal it because when we start to work on healing, we also heal ourselves. And there's that part of us that any 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 time somebody. I mean, we know that when someone projects anger, projects hate, and tries to throw things away, that's really a reflection of how they're feeling about themselves. And so mm -hmm. we don't want to be that way. We want to heal ourselves too. We want to heal ourselves through all this, this confusion that we've all been through. And so that is, again, my closing statement is we're here to heal, not to destroy. So, um, so yes, the darkness cannot create anything. Only the light can. And we are most definitely of the light. So, um,
So guys, again, I will be putting links to both Stephanie and Cindy's channels down in the description box below. Um, and ask all your questions. And we thank you guys for sitting through this. And um, thank you for participating in this this uh this journey of discovering with us so um all right we'll talk to you guys all soon bye everybody bye